Okay, I want to finish the lecture by looking at several examples for inverse problems or for medical imaging. And uh, I will start with uh, magnetic resonance tomography, not because it's so mathematically interesting, you'll see that it is not, but uh, because it is one of the three main tomographic devices which are more or less used in every hospital. So before we start, uh, let us make sure that there's still room enough for a further imaging device, for one more imaging modality. And uh, we've already talked about CT, which provides excellent images, as you can see here. So this is a typical tomographic um, photo, a tom 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 tomographic image. So uh, it has a lot of details, it's excellent, right? Um, what you can, but what you can also see is that uh, this is, a, of course, a uh, CT of the brain, that uh, there is hardly no contrast over here. So it looks like um, there's no difference. I mean, it looks like a, a just um, a homogeneous mass over here. Which is of course not of, of course not at all true. I mean, the, the brain has a lot of um, of, of different uh, substances, but um, it's all something like a soft tissue uh, contrast, and this is almost invisible uh, with respect to X-rays. So what you can see here is the skull. Uh, you can see the uh, interior bones over here. That's all great, but uh, it's very hard to see the soft tissue in here. So uh, for the brain, this is more or less unusable if you're not looking at a cracked brain, but really want to see what's going on inside. Um, as an alternative, of course, we had uh, emission tomography, but that's completely different, right? I mean, that's not meant to show us soft tissue differences, short, uh, soft, tissue contra uh, soft tissue contrast, but uh, it's meant to show us functionality, uh, which in this case gives us what we would like to see, right? I mean, now we see regions and now we also see that not everything was as homogeneous as it was over here. But if typically emission tomography has a very bad resolution, also due to the fact that you don't want to feed too much radioactivity inside the patient. So um, this is in a way unusable as well. And uh, now that means that we have hardly a way of looking at soft tissue in a tomographic way. And that's exactly what magnetic resonance tomography does. This is uh, not the same head, right? I mean, um, there are nice comparisons. I just took these at random from Wikipedia because uh, these were free, these images were actually free. Uh, but this is what a typical MR of the head might look like. And you see that in this case, it's quite hard to see the, the bones. So uh, this is in a way complementary, but um, um, you see the uh, soft tissue contrast very nicely. And uh, so this is something that's definitely different. Let me mention something, and I think I didn't do that uh, when I uh, introduced computerized tomography. Of course, there is a way of uh, making soft tissue contrast visible. Uh, you just feed a contrast agent into the patient that uh, accumulate that is visible in an X-ray, and uh, which uh, accumulates in regions where you, uh, that you're interested in, very much like in emission tomography, where you take the radioactive tracer for that. And um, so then um, differences that were not visible before might be visible now. And uh, maybe I can enlarge this a little bit. Yeah, for example, um, this over here is a tumor which was hardly visible over here and which is now uh, definitely visible after a contrast agent was applied. So that's one way of uh, making uh, soft, also soft tissue contrast visible within a CT, but um, that's um, not, not a very good idea because uh, also these contrast agents are not very healthy. You would definitely try to avoid using that. So uh, then in these cases, MR would be the much better choice. 
Okay, so uh, I hope that uh, I convinced you that it makes sense to look at one more modality. And um, the problem with uh, magnetic resonance is that uh, other than the Rayland transform and the computerized tomography, uh, where the physical modeling was extremely simple just using the transport equation, um, the physical background is much more complicated here. And uh, I will um, I will simplify everything as much as I can. Um, and uh, that will mean I will not do everything 100% physically correct. So again, I hope that no physicists are present. Okay, um, so uh, the simplification is I'll take whatever model I like just to make clear, a uh, nuclear model uh, just to make clear uh, what I, um, what um, uh, MR, uh, MRI finally does. And uh, that means um, for the body, I will assume a particle model. Uh, I will assume that uh, in the human body, there are hydrogen cores, so protons, which are rotating and uh, rotating around an axis. And uh, that means that they generate a very small magnetic field. And that will be my model for the whole lecture. Okay, uh, the main idea is so that there's something that's rotating about itself. And uh, we need the notion of precession. And uh, that's always um, depicted in, in every explanation of MRI. You see something like a gyroscope or uh, the uh, equivalent of a Kreisel, of a toy, of a children's toy. And Basically, it just said you have something that's uh, moving, uh, that's uh, circling around, and then you apply a force from the side, and what happens is that the gyroscope will start rotating with a much smaller frequency than the rotation frequency. So uh, it will look something like this. I hope you can say that, see that. So uh, uh, the disk is uh, rotating at a high speed. Uh, but uh, that's independent of the rotation of the whole thing. And you can see well, that gyroscope is now rotating around, um, is, is now rotating around a common axis. So it's circulating. We call that rotation precession. Okay. Um, yeah. So why does that work? What is the force behind that? I'm, I'm not going, and I couldn't, probably I couldn't explain it right anyway. So, uh, but the thing is that uh, the gyroscopes are somehow kept upright by the gravitation. So that gravitation that goes from, um, goes up, um, that goes down, um, causes uh, this, um, causes the precession, and it is initiated by a perpendicular push. So I just Push the, push the gyroscope, then it starts circling in the way that uh, I just described. One thing is, uh, one thing that you can also observe uh, with uh, simple toys, uh, the frequency of the precession will not depend, uh, will depend on the gravitational strength, but it will not depend on the strength of the push. So uh, it will um, be larger if you push hard, but uh, the frequency will not depend on that. And that will be one key ingredient of magnetic resonance tomography. Okay, um, so the idea is um, we do this the, exactly the same thing for protons or for hydrogen cores. Now, um, the first thing is that uh, we apply a magnetic field along the long axis of the body of a human. So uh, this is really a, an unbelievably strong magnetic field. It's usually in the range of about three to four Tesla. 
And uh, if you've ever um, come across that unit in school, usually uh, the strength of magnets is measured by micro Tesla, micro, um, I don't know what Teslas, but having three Teslas or something is, is really an unbelievably strong magnet. Unfortunately, I don't have the permission, I think, to show you these videos here, but there are um, lots of videos on the internet, for example, on YouTube, um, where people um, accidentally moved chairs into a room where a magnetic resonance tomograph is. And uh, that uh, chair that in uh, includes iron um, is immediately attracted by the, by the uh, tomographic device. You cannot easily shut off the uh, the magnetism, so uh, you have to somehow get it out. And uh, there's there's a nice video where, where I think three or four people are trying, really trying hard, to get out the chair, and they finally do it, but they need all the strength they have. So um, I ask you to uh, uh, to actually look this up, and maybe I will just put it into the YouTube playlist. I think that's a good idea. Okay, um, so you have this unbelievably strong magnetic field and uh, the effect on the body is the following. Of course, you have a lot of water inside your body, so you have a lot of hydrogen cores. As I assumed, these are rotating about themselves, and but the axis of this rotation is just randomly distributed. And so also these small um, magnetic fields that are generated just um, are just randomly oriented. Okay, now you apply the magnetic field along the body, so along the main axis. I made a very nice image picture drawing over here. So it's going like this. And the effect is that uh, all these cores inside my body will now orient along the axis of the magnetic field. Unfortunately, they will orient along the axis, but it's uh, a little, it's more or less undefined whether they're going, whether they will be pointing up or down. So um, still the total net magnetic field will be zero because some are going up and some are going down and the uh, total is zero up to a very, very small amount. So um, in fact, a little bit more protons will be oriented upwards than downwards. So you will have a slight, um, a slight, a slight magnetic field, additional magnetic field that goes up. Okay, um, so, uh, and by the way, the question is, why do we have, why do we really want to have that strong magnetic field? Well, uh, the difference between the upgoing and downgoing uh, protons will be, uh, will be proportional to, uh, to the strength of the field. So you have the, the more of that um, non-equilibrium, uh, the higher the magnetic field, the larger, the uh, stronger the magnetic field is. Okay, um, so we have a little bit more pointing up than down. Uh, since everything cancels, uh, since all the others cancel, we will now um, just assume that we have only protons going up and uh, we can forget about the rest. So we have some protons going up and um, I tell you right from the beginning, the density of these protons, that's what we're going for. Okay, um, now um, these are circulating gyroscopes in a way. So uh, we can uh, induce a precession by pushing them. And in fact, um, that is done with a, uh, with a perpendicular electromagnetic push. So uh, um, wh whatever that may mean, we, have, uh, we send in a wave that will push the, um, that will push the, um, uh, the uh, protons out of equilibrium and they will start precessing. The thing is that this push is actually a wave, and uh, that um, that means it's not just pushing once, but it's pushing periodically. Even if the time is very small, um, that would be pushing periodically. So that will come with a frequency. 
Now that makes a problem because uh, think of a swing. Uh, that's, I think I had it here. Yes, that's what it's meant to be. Yeah, right. Uh, think of this triangle actually being a swing. Um, and um, we look at it when it's po just pointing downwards and going in the right direction. Okay, so it's coming up, it's going like this. And um, of course, in this position, you must be pushing from the left hand side, right? You must be pushing from the left hand side to accelerate the swing and make it swing higher. Okay, when it's coming back, uh, then of course you have to push from the right hand side to make it swing harder. Otherwise, I mean, if you would still uh, push from the left hand side, then uh, now you would uh, just diminish uh, the amount of swing. Actually, it would stand still. Okay, um, so uh, what is quite evident is this is only going to work when the frequency of my pushing the swing will match the swing frequency. And that's exactly what's happening uh, for the electromagnetic field. The field that's sent in has a frequency and it has to match the, um, the precession frequency of the protons. Okay, um, so if it does, then that's great. Uh, up to uh, up to lightning speed, up to light speed. Excuse me, <laughs> up to light speed. Uh, all protons will receive that push at the same time, so where they will start processing at the right uh, at the same time. And uh, if the um, precession frequency matches the frequency of the wave that's coming in, then um, they will all start processing at the same time and they will all now process exactly in the same way. Okay, um, the precession frequency um, in fact depends as for the, as um, the, um, um, precession frequency of the gyroscope depended on the gravitation. The precession frequency of the protons depends on the external magnetic field. So it's something like omega is gamma. I think that's gamma only, not gamma naught. Is gamma times B naught, and B naught is the strength of the magnetic field. And we call this um, precession frequency also the Lama frequency. And the key to magnetic resonance will be to change that frequency in a way. Okay, uh, now how can we uh, how can we now generate images? Well, um, what we will finally be able to deduce is the strength of, um, is the amount of protons. So the proton density, the distribution of protons or the distribution of water inside the body. And that's different with soft tissues. And that's the reason why uh, we will be able to differentiate between different tissues because they have different amount of water in, in them. And that's also one reason why we didn't see anything in the bones because uh, in the bones there's no water. So uh, nothing is there that uh, could uh, uh, do the precession. And so we get no signal, so no signal from that. So keep in mind what we want to go for is the proton density. And also keep in mind that this is a very simple model. Uh, in fact, what, uh, what magnetic resonance does and, and what is um, one of its main features is um, there are several ways of influencing that image. For example, we might push the image, we might take the push so everything starts processing. And now we don't, uh, we are not trying to go for the, um, for the, um, we're not trying to go for the, um, um, for the proton density immediately, but we wait a little bit. And what happens then is that uh, the precession gets slower and slower. And so we measure a little bit less later. And the thing is that this getting slower somehow also depends 
on the material. So just waiting a little bit will give us maybe will maybe give us a, a completely different image as before because some of the uh, precision will already be over. Um, some won't, uh, and uh, so we have a way of actually inf influencing the image of getting different images from exactly the same modality. But we forget about that. Our idea is we push, we immediately measure, and what we then get is somehow the proton density. Okay, let me make a small break here.